Hello and welcome to another lawn trimmings video by Lawn Fawn. It's Kelly Marie here and today we're going to be talking about this really fun lawn trimmings cord. We have two different styles. We have this triple pack that has these three different colors that actually coordinate with our bright side paper line. So you can see how well these match, especially with this paper here that has all of the colors. We have the really great charcoal gray, the goldenrod yellow, and the teal. And what's really fun about these is they coordinate with the bright side, but they're pretty neutral colors too, which means they actually will coordinate with a lot of papers and other things you might have in your stash so it's really fun to use with all sorts of projects and then we have this really great natural colored trimmings cord and this stuff is wonderful because it matches everything and you can actually dye it with mist or ink or markers all sorts of things which we'll do in a little bit one really cool thing about our packaging is these spools actually turn on the package. So let's say you had a clip it up or one of those things where you can kind of clip up products on there. You can actually spin the cord right off of the packaging and this one spins also. You could of course pop the spools off and have them just like this. So you could put them in your drawer or however you store your twines and cords and strings just like this. And then you can also, if you didn't have a clip it up, you could store it on the packaging too, which is what I really like to do because this way you'll see right here, this is one that we used for our trade show. So hundreds of people played with this, these uh, lawn trimming cords and it actually survived the journey. And you can see you can actually just keep them all this way and it keeps it from getting completely tangled. So I like to store it this way so I don't have a box full of just tangled stuff everywhere. These trimming cords are actually made out of hemp, which means they're really eco-friendly and it kind of has some different properties. It holds its shape really well and does some pretty cool things. So it's really fun to use and it kind of adds like a fun new stash thing into your crafty stash. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Right here, I'm gonna grab some of the yellow color so it really pops off the page. And I'm just gonna spin some off just like this. It's really fun to do it that way. And just trim a piece off, I'll trim a longer piece. And you'll see as it comes off, I should get sharper scissors. <laughs> as it comes off the, um, the package, it's gonna have a bit of the spin to it because it's been tied pretty tightly around that spool. I, I personally like things going around the spool more than around the card when it comes to this hemp cord because when it goes around the card, it might kind of get some of the kinks in it. And this way, it just has this spin on this, but the hemp will actually react pretty well to your fingers. So if you just take it and stretch it out just like this, so I'm just running my fingers along it. It'll actually respond to what you're doing, kind of like when you play with ribbon, and you can kind of make it do what you want and curl which way you want it to curl. You can actually get it to lay pretty straight instead of having all of those little twists and turns that it had in it before. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit. So that's really, really great. And you can also, in that case, actually take something and get it to curl the way you want to. So say you wanted a really great curl at the end of your bow, you can actually curl it around your finger just like that and it'll hold that shape. And then I can go ahead and just straighten it out again. So I love that you can really play with it and all you're doing is using your fingers. So what's really cool, are, I love the bows with this. I am the worst bow tire. I mean, really, I, I have never been able to tie one of those big, beautiful bows that people do. But what I love about this is I can actually tie a pretty decent bow <laughs> with this because it holds a shape and always looks really cute when you tie it. So I just tied a normal bow there. I'm just playing with it and making my little loops smaller. And what I love about it is you can actually kind of play with it just like we did before and get these really great big bunny eared loops just like that, which I think is so cute. So you can see there. And then you can just trim it off. Oh, I need sharper scissors. My goodness. Let me switch to different scissors. Oh, those are full of adhesive. I don't know if that happens to you guys. And I, I should really have scissors that are just meant for ribbon and things, but I always forget and use them anyways. So right here we can curl these ends again, just like we did before, just to get a really cute bow. And so you can do some really cute stuff, tying them around cards, putting them on presents, um, on tags, on layouts. I mean, there's so many things you could do and cute things with little bows and things. So I think that's really fun. I love those little long little tails on it. So you could really make it your own that way. Something else really great with this is they're really great for threading buttons, which looks awesome. So I'm just gonna pull off some of the teal and actually, actually be, you'll see with decent scissors, actually be able to snip it off well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and thread it through the button real fast. Okay, so it's all threaded through and you can see how cute that looks. I love the colored, um, the colored twine going through the button. I think it looks adorable. And, um, and right there, what I like to do personally is I don't like to tie a knot in the back um, if I'm just gonna put it on a layout or a card. And I don't really like tying, um, because it kind of leaves a little lump and it doesn't sit as well. So I just like to put a glue dot right on the right on the button. 
And then I just take it and take the two pieces and just stick them to the glue dot just like that. Hopefully you can see that there. And then I just trim the sides off, the little tails off. And there I have a perfectly threaded button. It's gonna lie pretty flat, especially on a card if I'm gonna mail it. I like to do that so it's not too bumpy. Of course you could always stitch it to the card, but, uh, but I think that's pretty easy. And then you could have a bunch of threaded buttons waiting for you for different projects. I think that looks really cute. So right now, let's go ahead and do some dyeing of these cords. So I'm just gonna pull off some of the natural cord. And I'm gonna go ahead, here's some of that. I'm just gonna do my little, my little trick here to get it to lie flat. I'm actually just gonna cut that in half because we're just gonna try some different things here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my little craft mat out so I make less of a mess on my desk. And I just wanted to show you some different ways, and these are just some of the ways. I mean, you could get really creative and I'm sure come up with really awesome different ways to dye this, but I thought this could be kind of fun, is to just try some different ways. And my hands are gonna get messy, but I think it's fun to have inky hands. My hands are always dyed some random color. <laughs> so right here, I'm actually just taking, this is just a basic dye ink pad, any old dye ink pad, and I'm just gonna run it on the ink pad just like this with my fingers. And what's great about this is, is the texture of the twine comes through and you get a really cool look with it. It's kind of a little bit distressed and, um, and I, I really like how it looks. So I'm just going ahead and of course you can keep adding color on if you want it to be darker just like that. So I'm kind of like pushing it into the ink pad and getting more on there where I see kind of blank spots. Just like this. And you can see here how great that looks. So we have looks. this really fun turquoise color now and you can see the original ones. It's kind of fun to do that. Now, another way to do this, that was with a dyeing pad, so any dyeing pad would work that you might have. Another way to do this is with distress inks, which are dye inks also, but, um, and you can try it with any inks. I mean, you can try anything you have, and if you try something cool, let us know, because I want to hear about it. Um, and so let's go ahead and do, let's see, some distress ink. So I'm just going to do the distress ink, oops, just exactly the same way. I'm just going to cut this in half. So just like this, I'm just rubbing it on. And you can kind of leave it like this one. I might just leave it so I didn't do it perfectly. So this one's kind of, you can stop right there and have some of that, the kind of natural hemp color showing through, or you could keep rubbing it in and getting a darker color. So just like this. And Distress Ink, it's such a great ink because it takes a little while to dry and it stays really wet. So you can really get it in there and get it to stay and now you'll see how much brighter that pink is. So you can really make it your own by adding, you know, adding just a little bit or pushing it into the ink pad more. So that's kind of fun. So here's some more colors here so you can kind of see the comparison. The dye ink pad, the distress ink, which is a little more saturated. Part of that might be the bright color too. And then the natural. And then something else that you can do, wiping off. I wipe off my fingers on a baby wipe. They still stay pretty dyed, but at least I don't get ink on my clothes and stuff that way. So another fun thing that we can do is use a Copic marker to color them. So all you would do is just kind of start coloring it like this. And this would work really well with a Sharpie too, because Sharpie is a permanent ink also. So some of these, like if you know the ink starts coming off, you could heat set it with a heat gun. Um, or once you put it on your project, it might, might not really matter as much. It'll just dry over time. But the, the great thing about the permanent marker is, is it's just going to be permanent. Um, and it looks really great this way. So you can see that color there. It looks really fantastic. And just real fast, just to try it, I want to try a little bit. Just cut off some more here and just straighten it out. Just want to try a little, let's see, maybe we talked about Crayola markers in our other video, we did some watercoloring, so let's just try a good old Crayola. You know, any markers that maybe your kids might have. I don't have kids, but I still have Crayola markers. I just, I just love it. I love the 604 pack of crayons too. <laughs> but uh, right here, you can actually just color that too. The Copic marker is a little bit easier because it has that brush nib to it, but you can see if you just took some time, you could actually do it with any markers that you have at home, just like that. And so you just have to take your time. 
Okay, so right there is with the Crayola marker. You can see it's not perfect, and I could probably take some more time and keep inking it up. And the ink comes off a little bit versus, say, the Copic, which is going to be like a Sharpie. You know, it's going to be permanent. But it definitely will give you a cool colored look just like that. So ink pads, um, you know, ink pads, just dress ink pads, markers, Copic markers, Crayola markers. And then the other really fun way to dye these is using mists. So I'm going to grab one of my mists here. Let's see which color I would like. I think we'll do this fun cameo color. And I'm going to go ahead and just shake it up and then grab what I like to do with a mist in is I just take a box and I throw my twine and then I mist in here. Because if I mist on my desk, I'm going to dye my desk pink. I know it. So I thought that would be easiest. You can also use things like these glimmer mists too. I really like these Mr. Huey ones because they're a little more of a saturated color and so it really colors the ink. And what I like to do is I like to spray it just like this. And then I like to rub it just like we did with the ink pad. I like to rub it in the ink that's kind of in the bottom of the box. And you'll see, look at that fantastic color. It's kind of a really great pale pink. And you could keep running it through the, the, the mist right here and getting some more ink on there. And another thing that's really fun to do is I got that great saturated color with this Mr. Huey's mist. And now I'm going to take my, um, my glimmer mist here, which I haven't used in a while, so it needs to be mixed around. And I can add some sparkle to it too, which is really great. So I can just go ahead and add that sparkle in there and then just run it through. Just like that. So now it's kind of even a paler pink color and it's got some sparkle and shine on it. I'm not sure if that comes through on the camera, but it's really pretty. This like kind of palish pink. And then of course you could always, if you wanted to say make it a little bit brighter, because of course that, that sparkle one had a little bit of white in it, we can just take the pink again and put that in there. And you could mix colors, you could do all sorts of fun things. So there Okay, so we have this great saturated color on here with these fun sparkles on it. But you, of course you could wait for it to dry, but I'm really impatient. So you can just heat it with a heat gun actually. So I'm just gonna take my heat gun here and hold it down just like this and heat it right up. Okay, so now I've kind of sped up the drying process and I'm ready to use it. And I think that it's really cool pale pink color. And of course you could use different colors. I've got a fun, you know, a fun orange, a kind of orangey yellow and this really great green. And you can just make any kind of colors that you want with that. Okay, so that is our lawn trimmings cord. You can see how we have the great kind of triple color pack, which you can make some really fantastic bows. It really holds its shape. It's great for threading buttons. It's great for putting around your cards, using it on tags, on scrapbook pages. There's a lot of examples on our blog that you guys can check out at lawnfawn.blogspot.com. Really fun ways to use this cord. And then we've got the natural one, which will match any project, and then you can dye it too. So right here we did some Copic marker. Here are some mists. This one was some Distress Ink, which is a really great reddish pink color. This one right here was the um, dye ink pad. It was one of the Jenny only Bolin ink pads, but any ink pad would work. And then right here we have this uh, really fun one with some Crayola marker. It doesn't look perfect, but it works. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.